So the Japan Film Festival Online is back for its 2024 edition, and we're here to review one of the movies that's available to watch for free online in the comfort of your own home. There are a whole bunch of movies out there, but the first one that Bahir and I watched is called BL Metamorphosis. It's based on a manga of the same name, and it might be the coziest movie I have seen in a very long time. Oh, yeah. Cozy is a great word. So I know you don't read much manga, Bahe, but there are all of these sub, sub, sub genres of manga. There are dozens upon dozens of them. And this one falls into a subcategory called Yaoi manga, which is about boys and men being in love. So the BL stands for boys love. This isn't a movie about a homosexual relationship, however. It is instead a movie about multi-generational women who find a common interest in that type of manga. Mm -hmm. So it's meta even in that way. And so what you have is an older woman who encounters an issue of this yaoi manga finds that she really gets into it and then forms a relationship with a bookstore worker who helps her find more issues of this manga. That's how it starts. And it's weird, but that is the entire basis of this film. That's where it kicks off. And then throughout these two hours, we see how their relationship grows and how they come to support one another in life. Like, that's it. That's this movie. I'm still caught up with your description of it being cozy. It's cozy, man. It's warm. It's cozy. It's it's life-affirming. It didn't end up where I thought it was going to, especially where it starts, because the movie opens with this very matronly old lady who bumps into this bookstore and picks up a manga because she likes the way it looked. She likes the cover, right? She liked the cover, yeah. And then for her to go home and read it and then come back and then find out what it's about, it was so... It's such an innocence to it. I was expecting there's going to be some drama. She's going to be like, what is this? Why are the people reading shit like this? Yes, yes. Because she's of the older generation and, 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 and you know, you were thinking, oh, maybe the young girl is going to teach her the ways of modern world and modern life. Yeah. And, and all of and, that And then stuff. you're going to find out that she's also gay. And I'm just like, you know, the whole thing. And I'm like, no, no, no. I didn't need any of that. It's a beautiful story about an older lady finding a book that she really loves and falling down the rabbit hole with this young guide. Like if I had to sum it up in one sentence, I would say that essentially the message of the movie is about art being able to bridge relationships and differences. Yeah? Like that is what it's about at its core. But then it's also just about these two people and a very sensitive look at their lives lah. But never needing to turn up the dial of drama, right? The young girl doesn't come from a broken home. I mean, her parents are never around. Or not around a lot. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a broken home. But it's that thing of like, you know, working mothers and, you know, latchkey kids and all that. And that's Correct. And she wants to be an artist herself, but, you know, she doesn't have the motivation and she doesn't have the self-confidence to do it. And that is where the older lady comes in, in developing her self-confidence. And so all of these small slice of life stories kind of happen within the course of this movie but it's just very easy going and that isn't a disparaging thing it's not us saying that this movie is boring in fact it's the exact opposite for me i saw this before you and i kept trying to describe it to you as how in its runtime of almost two hours nothing really happens but i was completely engrossed in it In a Hollywood movie, there would be the drama with the older person being somewhat of a bigot. Or there is a small romance element in this film, but that would be blown out of proportion because it would end up being a YA teen rom-com type thing. This movie doesn't necessarily go down those rabbit holes. You know why? Why? Because this movie isn't designed... This movie isn't designed looking at the quadrants of an audience. 
there's no way this movie was written and people were like, oh, but who is it for? Who is this movie for? Yeah, absolutely is it for the right. young kids who will follow the young girl? Or is it for the older ladies who will follow the old lady? It doesn't fucking matter. This movie is for people who love a good fucking story. And who love good characters. Like, from the get-go, most of these women are crafted with such care that you immediately feel for them. And it's not because they're indulging in deep conversations about their lives. No, just based on what they're doing, based on their actions alone. Like, there's just an extended sequence, for example, of Yuki just cooking in her kitchen, right? There was a line Yuki says fairly early in the film where she's reading the book and then she turns to a photo of her late departed husband and she goes, you got to wait a little longer. I'm not coming yet. Just got to wait. I'm just like, oh, what a beautiful moment. It's moments like that. It's character moments of her in the kitchen and cooking and we see what kind of person she is and how she goes about her daily duties. All of that builds character and all of that gets you invested in who these people are. And so because of that, you don't need these great moments of conflict to show you what character is. No, it's all there. And because you enjoy watching that, these people become surrogate friends. And so you use these two hours to spend time with them. They become friends. So the writers and the writing doesn't feel like they need to amp up to entertain you, to keep you involved, right? At one point, Yuki's daughter adult daughter, probably in her late 40s, comes to visit and it doesn't blow up. The daughter finds the BL book and she doesn't go like, what are you reading? Why are you hanging out with this 17-year-old reading about boys kissing each other? None of that happens. She just goes like, oh, you silly dirty old lady. <laughs> Let me drink some more sake and fall asleep. And then she proceeds to get drunk and pass out. Yeah, it's just great. It's like, it's okay, you know? And I love that. I love that I was able to just sit there and not constantly worry about what's going to happen with these women. I mean, we all know that only the Japanese can pull off something like this. They do it in their anime, they do it in their manga, they do it in their films, and it's a style that they do best. Americans try from time to time, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't feel the same. However, however, I posit this to you, Bahe. Okay. I feel Malaysians can do something similar. Oh, I agree. I think our culture, our tradition lends itself to this sort of storytelling because at its core, we are also like this. As much as I love La Luna, that is the version of La Luna I want to see. You know, where there isn't this abused wife storyline that they have to get involved with. Sure, there is a dastardly ketua kampung and that can be... I, I, I like the story element for where it ended up with, but... It doesn't need those moments. It's just this like sweet moment in the lives of these two women. And I feel like you're right. Malaysia can do it. We don't have to have, we don't have to do drama hari ini. It's BL Metamorphosis. It's that movie we saw a couple of years ago. Call Me Chihiro. Yeah. Or My Name is Chihiro. Something like that on Netflix about the... I think Call Me Chihiro. Call Me Chihiro, yeah. About the former prostitute who moves to a small town in Japan and how she affects the lives of everyone around her, right? It's that kind of storytelling that I just love getting immersed in and getting lost in. Yeah. I'm very excited to watch the other movies. I have a recommendation for you because I've seen a few more. Go. We made a beautiful bouquet. I love the title already. Just the title, bro. (laughs) We made a beautiful bouquet. Also great. Just like a simple slice of life. But this one's sort of a bit more about two young people falling in and out of love. And it's just this beautiful meditation on relationship. It isn't Netflix's marriage story. Nobody's punching a fucking wall here. It's great. It is my favorite time of year whenever the JFF rolls around, whenever the Japanese Film Festival Online rolls around, because I finally get to experience things and movies that I wouldn't ordinarily even know to look for. So, you know how this works. You've heard us talk about this for years now. Basically, You just log on to the website, the JFF Plus website. You register if you haven't registered already, and you just click play. That's all you do. The movies will be there. You just click play, and then you watch it from your laptop, from your home. Easy, free. What more could you possibly want? Maybe Japanese food. Oh, buy some Japanese food while you are watching these movies. Because a lot of these movies have food in them, and then you're going to be very hungry for Japanese food after. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
check out BL Metamorphosis. It is part of the Japanese Film Festival Online 2024. We will be posting links on our Instagram with instructions on how you can get involved. Let us know what you think once you've seen this movie, Goggler MY, all of our social media feeds. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline, 012-524-5208. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast.